Hello friends, welcome to another video on Cloudflare Workers. Today I'll be demonstrating how to create automatic smart routing as well as URL parameterization. And before we begin, I'd like to thank all of my new subscribers. Ever since this channel has exceeded a thousand subscribers, I no longer get notified when new people subscribe. So if you're new here, please say hi in the comments below. I always love seeing those and I'll reply to each and every one of you. So thanks again. So let's just jump right in by looking at the changes. So first I'm gonna open up the index file and you can see over here on the left side, which is our before, all of the pages have to be imported up at the top. And also down below here around um, lines 19 to 27, I have to create a route for each one of these. Every time I add a new page, I have to add one of these lines. You can see here, what I plan on changing it to, it has none of that. All of those lines have been removed. And up above, you can see here that I'm calling a brand new function, the one that we're gonna create called get new routes. And these are the lines I add to just add new routes. And after these changes have been made, I no longer have to modify this file when adding a new page. So the next thing I'd like to look at is the person page. So over here, you can see that to get this ID here, I have to first pull the URL out of the path name and I have to do this weird substring thing um, from a URL object off of the request.url. This is a lot of work that I have to do in every page that's gonna require um, pulling the parameters out of the URL. And you can see what I'm gonna end up converting it to is gonna end up looking like this. So the params are passed in into the function and then I can just call right here params.id. So I'm gonna start by creating a new file under lib, and I'm just gonna call that auto routes. And because I'm using Webpack, I can dig into the requires.cache, which will contain all the files that have been bundled together. And because this cache contains all of the files, they need to be filtered to extract just the files that we need. I'm gonna keep the filtering simple just by checking to make sure each one of these is a module and also exports a route. And the first test is going to check to see if the module passed in is an actual module. So it's gonna take in a potential module and it's gonna return true or false based on whether or not it is a module. So the first thing I wanna do is to just do some basic null checks. So I'm just gonna say module or not module or not module dot exports. Uh, if that is the case, then we're going to return false. And then what I can do is I can say, return object.prototype.toString, and then I'm gonna call that method with module.exports. And the reason why I'm doing it this way, instead of directly calling module.exports, um, it's just a little bit safer because I wanna make sure that I'm calling the, the toString of object and not whatever the toString happens to be on exports. And I want to check to see if that equals, and that's going to look like object module and the second one is going to be a route check so i'm just going to go ahead and copy this whole thing and it's going to be called is route it's still going to take in a module and this line is still going to be the same um, just because we want to still have a null check going on here um, but in this case i'm going to check module.export.route and instead of exporting the route, I want to return a Boolean. So I'm just going to use the double bang here. Just in case you're not familiar with this double bang syntax, all it does is it takes a truthy value and then returns it as true or false. And actually, I'm going to change this from is route to has route, just because uh, the module isn't going to be a route, but it might have a route. The next step is going to be to create the get routes function. So I'm going to export const get routes. And that's not going to take anything because I'm going to use the uh, require.cache from Webpack. And what I can do here is I can pass this into the object.values to just get the values out of each one because I'm going to be filtering these. Uh, each one is going to have a module and I'm just going to check to make sure it is a module and that it has a route. And because I also need the route and the method, I'm going to perform a transformation on the module. So instead of returning just the module, I'm going to return the route, the method, and as well as the module. So what the route is gonna be is that's just going to be module.exports.route. The method is going to be module 
dot exports dot method and I'm going to default the method to a get um, just to make the just to make that property optional and then the module is just going to be the the same module itself and that's it for auto routes .js. so once I go into the index and I start deleting all of these imports out they're no longer going to be included into the requires .cache. but I do have a plan for that so I'm going to go in here and open up my webpack.config file. And what I like to do here is to import a package called glob. And what that's going to do is it's going to let me import all of the files based on a pattern. So I'm going to say const glob equals require glob. And I can just get all of my files into an array by saying glob.sync because I want to use the synchronous version of it and I want to get everything in the source directory under pages. Um, I'm going to include any directories under pages and anything called .js. Now that I have all the files into an array, I can just say in my entry here, I'm going to call files.concat and I'm going to concatenate that with the existing uh, index page. And again, what this is gonna do is it's going to take all of the files that match this pattern, put it into an array here, and then I'm gonna include all of these in the entry. And the reason why I have to do that is because once I remove all of the routes from here, they won't automatically be included into the pages. So in my auto routes, when I'm searching for the require.cache, they wouldn't exist. So that's why this step is necessary. Now I need to convert all of these into routes. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to open up my index page here and I want to modify all of these routes. So these routes have to be inside each of the individual pages. So I can see here that um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this and this is the all people route. So I'm going to open up all people and I'm going to export a route here. And that route is going to be uh, just this section. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that for the remaining pages. So I have the person. Okay, and now that all the routes have been removed, I can see at the top um, all of these are declared but never used. So these can all be deleted now and I can replace these with one single import, which is going to be from my lib and auto routes, and that's just going to be the get routes. So here up above, I'm gonna put that all into a variable called routes, and I'm just gonna call get routes. And I'm gonna do this all up above here. So I'm just gonna move the um, router out of the handle request. I'm gonna move that up here also. And this route, is going to move up here too. And because the router will automatically send the request in, um, I can write the syntax like this. And next I just have to loop through each of these routes. So I'm going to say routes.foreach and that's going to take um, what was being exported over in the auto routes, which was route, method, and module. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just type in route method and module and these are going to be added to the router i'm going to call the method on the router and i'm going to pass in the arguments of the route and then the module now i can run this to see if everything is working so i'm just going to run npm run preview it's going to pop open a window here Uh, and it looks like I have an error in my routing. So let's open up my router. Okay, and it looks like I'm exporting the module, which uh, makes sense that it says that the, uh, the handler is not a function because I'm exporting the entire module and I need to export the actual function. So let's change this to module.exports.default. And if I go back to the browser, I can see that my hello worker is working. And then if I go to um, slash people, 
uh, this is working too. So it looks like the routing is working. You can see I don't have any of the imports up at the top here anymore and all of the routes are gone too. So it looks like the auto routes is working and it is pulling in uh, people from here. And the next thing I wanna do is clean up the routing here. So I really don't like how this whole piece here works where I'm creating a URL of a request URL and then I have to call URL um, path name dot substring. I really hate that. Fortunately, that fix is really quick. So because each of these routes are regular expressions, I can use name grouping. So what that's gonna look like is I'm gonna put a group around this catch all here. And for this group, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it ID. So the next step will be to get named groups working in the router. And so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the router.js file here. And this is the basic router that I copied from the Cloudflare examples. And of course, I'll link to, the, I'll link to this in the description below. Um, but to get this to work, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the request that's passed in and I'm gonna add a new uh, param property onto the request object. So I'm just gonna say req.param and that's going to equal and I'm going to check to see if we have a match. And if we do and we have uh, match.groups, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just attach the, the groups Otherwise, I'm going to include an empty object. And I'm doing that so that it always just defaults to an empty object. So um, param should never be null or undefined. Now that I have this, I can open up my person again. And uh, this is the only place where I'm using request. So I can actually uh, destructure request to just pull in the param. So um, param would be the object that we just created. And that's already going to have ID on it. So I can delete these two lines. And here I can change this to param.id. And let's run this again to make sure everything is still working. So here's our hello worker. And we were um, looking at the individual people page. Let's type that in. And it was this page here. So it looks like it is pulling it in correctly. So let's just do this one more time on the files page. So here I have the files page and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna convert this into a named group and I'm going to call that ID. It looks like request isn't being used anywhere so I'm just going to uh, destructure again to param and I no longer need this and then I can just rename this to param.id. And now I'm much happier with the way that the code's looking. I really didn't like that substring thing. It was actually very messy. And I didn't like on this index page how every time I wanted to add a new route, I had to add the route here, as well as the uh, regular expressions for the route here. So now each of the page, they have their own route, um, and then they have their own route parameters. Now this is actually starting to feel like a framework that I would enjoy using. And I'd like to thank you for making it to the end of the video. I really do appreciate you spending your time with me. And if you're new and would like to subscribe to the channel, be sure to also click the bell icon to also receive notifications when a new video comes out. And once again, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.